Hey everybody, this is Nafio from JetBrains. We're finally ready to release Data Spell 1.0. And this short video is designed to show you what it has to offer and a little bit on how to use it. So go ahead, take a look. We've built Data Spell from the ground up with the data scientist in mind. So that's why we have support for all kinds of interpreters, including Conda. In this example, we're going to use Conda and start up our project. Now, at the heart of any data scientist's workflow is a Jupyter notebook or multiple Jupyter notebooks. That's why Data Spell is designed with the Jupyter notebook at the center of its experience. Here, we can add an already existing Jupyter connection or open up a directory. For this example, we're going to open up a folder called Titanic that we got from Kaggle. This little folder contains a notebook and some data predicting whether or not a particular person will survive on the Titanic. First up, we have some data to train it with. This is in a CSV file that has multiple ways of looking at it, but mostly you can look at it as if it's a spreadsheet. Now let's head into our notebook. We've really gone back to the drawing board on our notebook support so that it is more fluid and just works better. To start off, anywhere you see text is a markdown block. For code blocks, you have both code as well as the output. If we head over into our first code block, we can see that we can just get rid of everything. And if I hit pd.readcsv and select that, pandas is automatically imported with an alias. We also get code completion for all the available files in our directory. In this case, I'm just going to select train.csv and extract that to a variable just like I can do in PyCharm. When I want to see the data frame itself, data spell is going to show that as a beautifully rendered table that I can scroll through and of course interact with. I can also open this up in a new tab to see it more comfortably if I wanted to. Going back to the notebook, we can see that we have support for all kinds of cells. So here we have support for LaTeX, going down step by step. This is just a table, just like any other. We also have support for charts. So this chart is rendered using matplotlib, and we can see this show up inside of Dataspell. We can also save it as an image. Dataspell comes with a lot of the features that PyCharm users have enjoyed for a while. So in this example, I can set a breakpoint, hit the debug button, and enjoy things like step over, step into, and of course, evaluation on hover, as well as view a series in its own tab. We can also evaluate any custom expression. So in this case, I'm just going to set an index and transpose it. And once that's done, I can view that as a data frame as well. And I can scroll through all of that just like I would do a table. That's enough notebooks. Let's head into a Python file. You can run a Python file just like you would a Python file in PyCharm. But here, you can also split the file up into different cells. So in this case, I am just going to insert a cell splitter. And I can access that using actions and heading into split cell. This means that when I execute any particular cell, only the code in that cell will be executed. And I can do that by pressing the little button with the cursor icon, and you'll see that only that part is executed. On the right hand side, we also have a normal IPython console. I can also open up any data frame inside the console in a new tab or any series for that matter. I can also run a cell by clicking on the little green gutter icon, just like I did now. Last but not least, you can set a breakpoint anywhere inside of your Python file, just like you could do in PyCharm. And of course, when you hit the debug button, you'll be able to see the debugger as well. Well, folks, that's about it for this short introduction to what data spell can do. This is our 1.0 release. Most of the things here are pretty stable. So go ahead and check it out.